Hi everyone, welcome back to Nirja Education. Today we are going to discuss the chapter whole numbers. In that one we are going to discuss about the properties of whole numbers. Before going to the video, please subscribe our channel Nirja Education and don't forget to press the bell icon. Today we are going to discuss about the properties of multiplication and division. Already we have discussed the properties of addition and subtraction. If you haven't gone through that video, please go through that video. Now we are going to discuss these properties for multiplication and division. What were the properties we have already discussed? Yes, the first one is closure property, commutative property, associative property. These three were the common properties that we were discussed. Here also the same we are going to discuss it for multiplication and division and we will check whether these properties are satisfied by multiplication or division. The first one we are going to discuss the closure property. What was closure property? Yes, when in the case of addition when we are adding two whole numbers if you are getting the answer as a whole number then it was closure property. Here in the multiplication also like the same way only when we are multiplying two whole numbers. When we are multiplying two whole numbers if we are getting the answer as a whole number then that property is true in the case of multiplication that we will see. I am going to take two whole numbers here 6 and 12. You know that these two are whole numbers. You are getting 12. Again 10 and 30. What you are getting? Yes, 300. Suppose I am taking 0. 0 multiplied by 5? Yes, 0. So all these numbers are whole numbers that means closure property. So multiplication satisfies this closure property. Now we will check it for division whether division satisfies this closure property or not. For that I am going to take one example here. Let us take 12 divided by 3. What will you get when you are dividing 12 by 3? Yes you are getting 4. You know that 4 is a whole number. Now I am going to take another number that is 9 divided by 6. You are going to get a whole number here. Can you divide completely 9 by 6? No. You will get the answer in decimal or otherwise in fraction. You have learned in fifth standard about fraction I think. So the answer here you are getting is in the form of fraction or otherwise in the form of decimal. So that means the decimals and fractions are not involved in the whole numbers. So here division does not satisfy this closure property. Multiplication satisfies but division does not satisfy the closure property. Next we will see our second property that is commutative property like the same way we will discuss it for multiplication and for division. Next we are going to discuss the commutative property. What was the commutative property? What was the general formula for commutative property for addition? Yes a plus b is equal to b plus a. The same law we can apply it for this also multiplication that is a multiplied by b is equal to b multiplied by a. Now we will check this with an example. I am going to take two numbers. I am going to take 3 and 5. First I am going to take 3. I am going to multiply 3 by 5. What you are getting? Yes, 15. Again you have to interchange the order. First I will write 5 and then 3. You have to multiply 5 by 3 now. What will be the answer? Yes, 50. In both the cases you are getting the same answer. When you are changing the order also you are getting the same answer. That means the multiplication satisfies this commutative property. Now we will check it for division. For that I am going to take two numbers. I am here going to take 16 and 8. 16 divided by 8. What will you get? Yes, you will get 2. 2 8s are 16. Now you have to interchange the order. That means 8 divided by 16. Is it possible for you to divide 8 completely by 16? No. Here you will get the answer in fraction form. So the answer here will be this can be written as 8 by 
60. So, here numerator and denominator by a common number you can divide. Here I am going to divide this by 8. When you divide 8 by 8, you are getting 1. When you divide 16 by 8, what will you get? Yes, 2. So, the answer will be 1 by 2. Like this way you can do the division also. That means here 8 you are dividing by 8. Then you are getting 1. Here 16 also you are dividing by 8. Then you will get 2. So, the answer will be 1 by 2. Here you can see here the answer is 2 and here the answer is 1 by 2. That means in division we are not getting the same answer. A divided by B is not equal to B divided by A. That means this division does not satisfy this commutative property. Multiplication satisfies commutative property, but division does not satisfy the commutative property. Next, we will go to the other property that is associative property. Now, we will discuss the associative property. What is associative property? For discussing associative property, we need three numbers. What was the general formula for associative property? Here, that is A plus B plus C, you have to change the intergrouping of the numbers also. Here, I am going to apply this for multiplication. I am going to take three numbers, A multiplied by B multiplied by C. First, I am going to multiply these two numbers, then again, I am changing the grouping here, last two numbers I am going to multiply. Here I am going to take three numbers that is 3, 4 and 5. First we will multiply this one and here also 3, 4, 5. The last one I am going to multiply. 3, 4 is 12, 12, 5 is 60. Here 3 multiplied by 4, 5 is 20. 23 is 60. In both cases, you are getting the same answer. That means multiplication satisfies the associative property. Now, we will check this property for division. So, that I am going to take 3 numbers that is 12, 4 and 2. Here I am going to write it 12 divided by 4 divided by 2. So, first we will do it here. In the second case, 12 divided by 4 divided by 2. Last two numbers we have to divide. When you divide 12 by 4, what you are getting? Yes, 12 divided by 4, 3. 3 divided by 2. That is equal to 12 divided by 4 divided by 2. You are getting? Yes, 2. And this is equal to 12 divided by 2 is equal to 6. 3, you can't divide 3 by 2 and you can write it as 3 by 2. In the fraction form also division we can write 3 divided by 2 can be written in the form 3 by 2. Now you can see that 3 by 2 is not equal to 6. We have verified this one. These two are not equal. So we can write it here also. These are not equal. That means the division does not satisfy this associative property. Multiplication satisfies this associative property but division it does not satisfy the associative property. From these examples we come to know that one. Now we are going to discuss another property that is distributive property. This we haven't discussed for addition and subtraction. This is for multiplication. Here multiplication is also there and addition and subtraction will also there. So, this property is known as distributive property. We will see what is the general formula for distributive property. This is the general formula for distributive property. A multiplied by B plus C is equal to A multiplied by B plus A multiplied by C. Instead of here addition, we can use subtraction also. A multiplied by B minus C also we can use. So, here instead of addition, subtraction will come. So, we will verify whether it is true. When you are multiplying left hand side, we are getting right hand side that we will check with an example. I am going to take three numbers here, 10, 5 and 2. 
So, 10 multiplied by 5 plus 2. What is the right hand side? First, you have to multiply 10 by 5 plus then you have to multiply 10 by 2. So, 10 multiplied by 5 plus 2, 7. Here, 10 multiplied by 5 will be equal to 50 plus 10 multiplied by 2 will be equal to 20. 10 multiplied by 7 that is equal to 70. Here, 50 plus 20 that is equal to 70. That means LHS is equal to RHS. Here, in both cases, we are getting the same answer. That means this law we have verified that distributive property is true that we come to know by this example. Here from this one you know that in both the cases 10 is common here 10 multiplied by 5 plus 10 multiplied by 2. We can see another we can tell in another way that means here common numbers are the 10 so this common number you can take outside. So here we have took this common number and the remaining numbers we can keep it in a bracket. So 10 multiplied by 5 plus 2. This is the two ways in which we can represent the distributive property. First this one is that a into b plus c. In the second case the common number we can take it outside and the remaining number can be kept in the bracket. So, this distributive property thus we have verified. Now, we will see what is multiplicative identity and what will happen when we are dividing a number by 1 and 0. In addition, we have already discussed about additive identity. Which number is known as the additive identity? Yes, 0 is known as the additive identity. Here we are going to discuss about the multiplicative identity. Do you know by which number when you are multiplying, you are getting the same number? Yes, you know that when you are multiplying any number by 1, you are getting the same number only. That means 1 is known as the multiplicative identity. I am taking one example here. 3 multiplied by 1, 3. 100 multiplied by 1, yes, 100. So, 1 is known as the multiplicative identity. What about 0? When you are multiplying 0 by any number, what you are getting? Yes, 0. There, when you are adding 0 by any number, you are getting the same number. But here, when you are multiplying 0 by any number, you are getting the answer as 0. Suppose I am taking 6 multiplied by 0, 0. 200 multiplied by 0, that is equal to 0. So, 0 when you are multiplying by any number, you are getting 0 only. What about division? When you are dividing any number by 0, what will happen? Two possibilities are the 0 may be in numerator or 0 may be in denominator. 0 divided by 3, what you are getting? Yes, 0. What about 3 divided by 0? This is not defined yet. We can't get any answer for this one. Normally, we are telling it as 3 divided by 0 is equal to infinity or otherwise not defined. If 0 is in numerator, we can identify it one or we can define it one. 0 divided by 3 is equal to 0, but 3 divided by 0 that is not defined yet. Now, I hope all of you have understood the different properties of multiplication and division. I hope all of you have understood the properties of multiplication and division. Thank you all and have a nice day.